So I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the top five tips that I use to catapult my physique my freshman year of college, 150 pounds soaking wet to now at 180 pounds of lean muscle tissue. And if you watch the video all the way through and you really take action, that's my hope, <laughs> on the advice that I'm dispensing here, guys, my hope genuinely is that this is going to save you a lot of time, energy, effort, and frankly, embarrassment that I ultimately endured. I'll never forget the first workout that I ever performed at the university gym that I went to. I literally brought in my personal laptop. It was a Toshiba satellite. And I had all of these P90X programs like pre-programmed on it. I would use like VLC media player and I would just like artistically like be following the workout. Like I couldn't just auto-regulate and come up with my own program and just maybe pick the brains of, you know, the jacked and tan football bros who were training alongside me, just like my eyes were glued to the screen and I was just robotically going through the motions because I didn't have the confidence to put myself out there to ask for advice from other people. So follow along with this one, guys. If you take this seriously, this is going to seriously expedite your progress in the gym. Stay tuned. Peace. All right, guys, so tip number one is literally just to leave your ego at the door. You were probably expecting some profound insight about protein or maybe how many grams you should be consuming per day. Don't worry, fear not. The last tip is something I can guarantee you've never heard about how to actually track your protein intake properly, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. But seriously, take this idea seriously that you wanna have the mindset of not caring about what other people think. I can never forget my first year or two in the gym just always wondering about how I was being perceived by other people. And the truth is, is that you never want to ego lift. You don't want to sacrifice the form and potentially risk getting an injury that is ultimately going to set you back in the long run. So guys, you have to have the wisdom, the foresight to not take other people's perceptions seriously. Focus on the process and each step in front of you. And that's the mindset you wanna carry forward. So my second tip is to be structured. Yes, have a plan. Be structured, but don't be completely as I used to be solidified, trying to force the square peg into the round hole. I can remember just artistically engaging my workout, showing up with a laptop, just following a preconceived regimen, just knowing the exact number of sets and of reps that I was going to be performing a priori and the exact order and literally just being autistically unable to, for example, juggle things around. You know, for example, if Suzy Q is on the lap pull down machine and I'm supposed to be there, you know, waiting 10, 15 minutes just for that to open up. And if not for being time inefficient, it's also a matter of listening to your body and being able to auto-regulate and not, for example, throwing your back out at 5.30 a.m. like I did, throwing you out of commission because you were overly ambitious and eager on the deadlift and weren't listening to your body, particularly your lower back, which wasn't feeling all that good if we're being honest. So guys, don't be autistically engaging your workouts, like allow yourself to actually feel if things aren't right. And don't use that as an excuse to not be structured and not actually train intensely, but you need to balance the two and that's going to help you long-term. All right guys, so my third tip is don't train at 5 a.m. And there's nuance to this, like maybe that's right for you. Maybe you should train at 5 a.m. Maybe you're one of the very rare individuals who actually would be appropriately in circadian sync at that time. But honestly, guys, the number of people that I see at that time of day are overly caffeinated because they're underslept. So this tip is all about emphasizing, literally prioritizing your slumber. I cannot count on even two hands the number of times, even in the past year, that I've actually skipped out on my workout 
for more sleep because I didn't have enough time in the morning. I don't set an alarm to wake up and neither should you. You literally want to get as much deep restorative sleep as possible because ultimately training potentiates progress, but sleep solidifies it, guys. Never skip out on your sleep. So then of course you might be wondering, asking yourself, so when should I train? What is the best time to do so if not 5, 6 a.m.? And again, look, I'm not saying that isn't the right time for you, but also make sure that you're getting to bed at an appropriately early enough time as well so you are actually getting all of the benefits of sleep for which there is no substitute. It's like, just like how vitamin D is not a substitute for sunlight, not completely, caffeine is not a full substitute for sleep. So always keep that in mind. And frankly, train at the time that is going to suit your schedule, that is going to make you most excited about training. That is something that you can actually adhere to regularly because the truth is that the king of consistency is gonna be the one atop the throne wearing the crown at the end of the day. So train at the time that works for you. So step number four, guys, is just to bite the bullet. You can get it for under $100. Get an Instant Pot. This thing will literally change your life. So I've got the Instant Pot IP Duo. I've been using this same machine for the last half decade, since 2018. And I'll throw an affiliate link on Amazon down in the description box below. If you wanna check that out, grab that, help support me, support this channel, just so you can get the exact same model that I use. It's the eight quart version. This thing is a complete and utter beast. So basically, you're just gonna hit steam. You're going to adjust your time. So one minute would be the lowest and you can adjust in one minute interval. So let's say I set it to three minutes on low pressure. Then after you set that, it's basically just gonna do its thing. It'll start beeping in just a few seconds. And what that means is that the way that you've programmed it, it's ready to go. And then what's going to happen is maybe five, six, seven minutes. Once it gets up to the internal pressure, it's gonna count down. So if you set it to three minutes, maybe four minutes or five, it'll be that plus the amount of time, maybe six or seven minutes, to actually get to temp. So guys, Instant Pot is a game changer. I literally had a disease that made my esophagus so inflamed that food would completely just get stuck and just feel so tight in my throat area and it was just, it was utterly chaotic. So I literally had my doctor write me a note so that it would excuse me from the college dining campus meal plan. I literally lived and ate out of a conventional dorm room. God only knows what my roommate Nick thought about that. But anyway, guys, I would have done anything, given my left leg for, for one of these. It seriously would have simplified my process and made it so I didn't have to use less optimal ways of cooking, such as microwave, for example. That is what I had to resort to. Guys, just do the best with the resources that you have for 97 bucks, maybe 90, 100 bucks. You can get one of these that has lasted me over five years at this point and never let me down. Highly recommend it. As promised guys, tip number five. We're talking about protein here and I'm gonna give you guys a live demo. I've got chronometer pulled up on my Google Chrome browser. I'm gonna be using my smartphone as well just to show you the step-by-step -step action item that this is going to necessitate so that you can follow along and actually get the benefit as well. We're gonna be calculating how many grams of protein you need to be consuming per day, but there's a very important caveat that I've just never heard talked about before, and I'm going to issue that in just a minute. But first, whatever the Android or iOS equivalent is for your device, just pull up the built-in calculator on your smartphone and you're just gonna be putting in how many pounds of body weight you currently are. And very simply, you're just gonna be dividing that by 1.2. And whatever the result is, in my case, 150 grams of protein, make note of that, but realize that the caveat 
is that number of grams needs to be animal derived. And I'm actually gonna pull up a graphic right now just to show you. It's something fancy called the DIOS score. It's basically the digestible indispensable amino acid score. And this is rating the quality of different types of protein, different sources of protein. What you can see is that the top 14 are literally all animal products. <laughs> like all the way from whey protein isolate to cow's milk, milk protein, and goat milk. All of these are animal derived. So my best advice is to myself, in this case, the 150 grams, I should be merely getting that from animal derived sources. And what we're gonna do now actually is confirm that I am in fact getting that. I'll show you guys my chronometer diary today. So if we pull up chronometer, go into the diary tab, then you can see I've got a lot of basmati rice on board. This is by the way, in descending order of calorie contribution. So I've got some ground beef, a lot of Greek yogurt, a lot of full fat dairy in general on my diet, whole milk, eggs, pomegranate juice, blueberries for the antioxidants. Got some gelatin powder, a little bit of beef liver. But what you're gonna wanna do is scroll all the way down, except I've got beef liver selected now. So you wanna make sure that you select out of any particular ingredient. So I'm gonna advance one day and then back tab. Then we've got everything selected. So you can see the total protein amounts here. And if you just hover over that, you can see how many grams you're getting from each source. So what I'm gonna do is add up the individual constituents that are animal derived. So again, just use your Android or iOS equivalent app on your phone. And I'm literally just gonna be taking a top to bottom approach. 94.7 grams from beef, 18.6 from yogurt, 17.6 from milk, 16.8 from basmati rice. It's a plant food, so I'm not going to count that. 15 from beef gelatin, 10.9 from eggs, and 4.7 from beef liver. I'm not gonna count the blueberries or the pomegranate juice either, which are merely trace amounts as is. My total is 161.5. So that's my working total. So I checked the box right across the T's and I dotted the I's. So that's the exercise that you wanna go through, guys. Make sure you're getting at least your body weight divided by 1.2 in grams of animal-derived protein per day. So that's it for today, friends. If you found these tips in any way, shape, or form helpful, help a bro out, comment down below, like and subscribe, friends, for more content like this. If you wanna build a better body, one that doesn't just look incredible by being lean and aesthetic, but one that actually feels good to navigate life in. If you wanna sleep like a rock and wake up in the morning as hard as one, then follow along for more content like this, friends. And until next time, find your freedom. Peace.